Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Park Hotel, uh, and welcome to the Ayrshire and Arran Tourism Gathering 2015, where the focus this year is on doing things slightly differently. Uh, my name is Gary Ennis from NS Design, uh, and today I'm going to be your host for the day uh, in what I hope are some inspirational speakers, um, some great presentations, and some really practical advice for you all, as we all adapt to do business in a world which is changing as I forget my clicker. Uh, sometimes this change is forced upon us. Sometimes we feel that the world and its radical adoption of social media, the internet, uh, online technologies, we sometimes feel arm twisted into doing some of this. Today we're going to hopefully encourage you to embrace it, not to fear it. First things first, as tends to be the case at these types of events, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, firstly, there are no planned fire alarms for today, so if indeed the fire alarm goes off, you all know the drill. We have our doors to the left, this is where I feel like cabin crew, we have our doors to the left um, where we muster in the uh, car park. Hopefully it won't happen, I said that in an event two weeks ago, it happened. Touch wood, it won't today. We also have some Q&A time. The reason we flag this up is we have an, a full packed agenda for you today. So unless you have a burning question that you must ask a particular speaker at a particular time, fair enough. Um, but if not, can I ask you please to keep your questions to the set periods that we'll have today, whereby you can ask these questions um, within the specific Q&A time scales. The other thing, which I know, let's face it, a lot of you are here just because, we're also going to feed you today. Uh, lunch will be provided. I can't quite promise it's going to look as cute as the little lunch box uh, that my son gets in the morning, but uh, the park hotel very rarely lets us down, so we can enjoy a, a very nice lunch later on. And lastly, just to say, a lot of the time at these types of events, you're told to turn your mobile phones off. Not here, we want you to keep them on, we want you to tweet us, talk to us, I'll be giving you some of the details on that in a minute. I maybe would ask that you turn your ringtone to silent, uh, unless of course you are that confident in your choice of ringtone that you're willing to share it with 175 people. And we will all judge at the end of that ringtone if indeed it is of that quality. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to play along. Quick word of mention to our sponsors as well, a great thanks to these, these people for helping make this happen today. We have uh, Visit Scotland, um, Ayrshire College, NS Design, um, Cook School Scotland and of course our venue for today, the Park Hotel. Okay, a second ago I said we want you to talk to us today. You've hopefully seen on either side of the stage we have our Twitter walls where there will be live tweets streaming throughout the day um, as and when you talk back to us on Twitter. Um, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can tweet Ayrshire Aaron, that's at Ayrshire Aaron, or you can use the hashtag Ayrshire Aaron Gathering 2015. And if, like me, you think that's just a little bit too long and will use up most of your 140 characters, we've also introduced a slightly shorter one, AAA Tourism, Ayrshire and Aaron Tourism, which again will get your tweets to the big screen. I should warn you, in case you're worried about not seeing them, the feed is moderated. So, you know, I've been at enough of these things where people mock the speakers, people mock my, my hair, Johnny's hair, the sense of dress. Give it a go if you like. I'll gladly respond to you. It might not make the big screen. Um, but we'll do our best to get as many things up there as we can. And I do encourage you to get involved and to get tweeting. Tweet the best parts, tweet the insights, tweet what you like today, take some photos, not just for the purposes of getting them on screen, but for the purposes of getting our message out to a much wider audience which is in the room today. It's all part of the promotion for Ayrshire and Aaron. If Twitter is not your thing, you'll notice that there's low technology on your tables. Uh, we've provided uh, these things which I believe are called post-it notes. I've never really seen one myself, but they look great. Annoyingly, they put out green post-it notes when I was putting up a nice, a nice uh, yellow one on the screen. But in all seriousness, if you want to use pen and paper, go for it. What we want you to do is write any questions, any issues. Um, if you want to meet somebody in particular, please don't use it as a dating agency. It's not that type of event. Stick it on the paper and we've got the wall at the back of the room which is all about the, the, uh, the visual wall. Get your questions and issues up there. There's a few post-it notes already stuck up. We want to see all of your questions and issues later on in the hope that we can try and address some of them throughout today and indeed beyond today. Okay, 
The video uh, I showed you, as I say, was Eric Qualman's social nomics video. Uh, and often that video gets businesses thinking about the impact of technology, the impact of change. Uh, I like to think that we can sum up the importance of it in a very simple way. I'm going to ask you all one question, and this is where I try and get you to engage with me and play along. Hands up in the room if you have ever been influenced by something someone has told you. Your mum or dad telling you that the restaurant was great, the, the venue that, uh, that they went to on holiday, the, the B&B which was really good, or the B&B which wasn't so good, or the venue which has gone downhill and doesn't cater for kids now, and that type of thing. It's a bit of a rhetorical question. Of course, we all have been influenced by things other people say. And that is the value of social media. Social media, the best description I've heard of it recently, word of mouth on steroids. Because that's what it can do for you. The good, the bad and the ugly. Let me try and sum it up very visually before I introduce our first speaker of the day. I'd like to try and describe what I think are our options in terms of how we deal with change. Okay? There are really three routes to it. We can uh, ignore change, we can embrace change or we can exploit change. And it's entirely up to you which one your businesses want to do. I'm going to visualize this through three businesses. Three businesses all from the same sector, which is that of tourism. The first one, a business which potentially ignored change. Many of you will know the name on the screen right now, Donald McKenzie. Donald McKenzie, um, Arguably, at the time, the oldest travel agency uh, in Scotland, um, formed in the 1920s, and unfortunately, went bust in 2005. The reason that uh, the logo on screen is so pixelated right now, because I had to go and find that from the internet archive from their website, which no longer exists, from 2005. Why did they go bust? Well, by their own admission in an interview in the Sunday Mail, um, we went bust uh, because of not being able to deal with the boom in internet bookings. They went bust because they weren't geared up for change. To quote the ABTA spokesperson, whose name was Sean Tipton at the time, also in that same article in the Daily Mail, the days of a travel agent sticking a few brochures on display and expecting people to walk in and book are gone. It is a case of adapt and survive, and sadly, some travel firms haven't. And that was in the days before Facebook and social media and the like. They simply, you could argue, ignored change. Let's look at a business who is embracing change. And this business, I'm sure some of you will know well, much more local to us, Thorn Travel and Co-Winning. Thorn Travel, founded in 2009, now have 16 staff, 16 full-time and part-time staff. They also have a thriving casual staff base as well, but in terms of the full-time, two of those staff are dedicated to nothing more than social media. Nothing more than doing social media. Why? Because they get well over six Facebook inquiries a day, which result in hard bookings. That's not to mention the inquiries and the interest they get on other forms of social media, such as Twitter and the like. You may know Thorn Travel as the business who did that video. You may be one of the many who mocked Thorn Travel for that video. Now believe me when I tell you, and I urge you to speak to Shona and her team, I believe she's in the room today, she will be hiding right now, um, I urge you to go and ask her who is having the last laugh. Because that video, by embracing change, got them 1.5 million views in nine days. That video got them hundreds of inquiries from the press, from the media, and also from the punters from the customers who saw it, laughed, appreciated it, understanding that, wow, you live my world, you deal on YouTube too. And the proof in the pudding with all of these things didn't make a difference. Absolutely, it made a difference. Over 100% bookings, uh, increase in bookings, increase in revenue that month, which continues to this day. Great example of a company who get it and use social media and the web and technology to their benefit. Lastly, let's look at a company which has exploited change. And by that I mean companies which arguably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the change. They have come out of the woodwork and arisen because of the growth in internet and technology and so on. The company I'm talking about is Skyscanner. 
arguably one of Scotland's biggest companies nowadays. They're the nearest thing we've got to Google. And if you ever have the pleasure of visiting one of their offices, I urge you to do so because it's as far removed from the corporate environment as you can get. It's full of fun and games and pool tables and fish tanks and everything in there that you expect of Google. That whole culture. Skyscanner, um, their revenue has just hit 93 million, partly due to the massive increase of visits on a mobile phone. And again, I stress that point because I'm going to ask you all later on to think about what's your business like on a mobile phone? Because that is one of the key trends we all need to be aware of today. Um, huge success, offices all over the world and indeed uh, Scotland. So, question is, are you going to embrace change? Are you going to ignore it? Are you going to embrace it? Or could we even exploit it? Could we be what's called a digital disruptor? Could we mess up the industry because we get it slightly faster, more ahead and better than everyone else? Okay, to kick us off today uh, and to tell us uh, what's been happening in Ayrshire and Arran tourism over the past 12 months and to give you an insight into the tourism leadership group which he chairs, would you please welcome to the stage Nat Edwards. Thanks very much, Gary. Um, and I must say thanks again to the, the, the Park Hotel in, in Kilmarnock. Um, this is it's really impressive, just looking out. Slightly daunting as well, but it's really impressive looking out and just looking at how slick and professional and business-like this whole thing is. And I, I thought the last two tourism gatherings that we had were really good, were top-notch events. Um, but they really have grown year on year, and they just feel a little bit more robust, a little bit more muscular, a little bit more can do. And I think, you know, the, the transition over the last couple of years from, from sort of first getting together and sort of sharing some of our challenges and problems, having a, a sort of collective moan in a, in a business-like and sort of commercial kind of way, um, to, to this kind of feeling and energy that's coming out of the room right now, uh, I think is, is, if it's the only thing that we achieve today, it's, 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 it could be incredibly powerful. Of course, we're going to achieve a lot more. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, thanks very much to the Park, Park Hotel for this. I know they're giving us a very, very competitive uh, uh, price and there's all sorts of sponsorship from our, our, our friends in other organisations, which means that we're able to give you, you know, a, a great day today. Uh, and, and you shouldn't underestimate how important that sense of solidarity and cooperation and collaboration is uh, at, at taking us forward. Um, but actually, partnership isn't the theme of today, so I won't dwell on it too much. Um, what, what the theme of today is, is about change and innovation and, 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 and making things different. So my, my job is to talk about what we've been doing in the last year, but I, I don't want to just talk about what we've been doing in the last year because I want to, I want to set the scene really for, 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 for what happens next. And often the, the job as the, the, the chair of an organi organization like this is to be slightly smug and slightly complacent. And I think there's an element, there's a dangerous element in, uh, in our industry uh, that, that sometimes crops up, you know, that I, you've all been to events uh, in conference centres where, you know, men in grey suits, often, you know, graduates of the same university will all sort of sit around together and slap each other on the back and, and say what a great job we're all doing and if, if we just all carried on doing a bit more of that, wouldn't it be fantastic? And actually, I, I think the times we're in, in Ayrshire and Aaron, don't really call for complacency and smugness and men in grey suits. They call for something else uh, and, and, and that's what we should be looking for. So we have done a great job over the last year, but it's a great job with a word of caution about what we need to do next. I also want, I was, I was struck in that presentation, it was, it was really fascinating, the, the film, the sort of fat boy slim thing that we had at the, at, at, at the beginning there. Um, and I, I obviously don't have much of an attention span because I can't remember all of it. But the thing I do remember is the fact that goldfish seem to have more of an attention span than people now, which um, is challenging if you're having to talk to anybody for 10 minutes. Um, but so I, I want to ask a question because it, it is true that we have so much information being thrown at us and you'll have lots of information thrown at you today. Um, but it's also true that what really makes our industry work is, is if we can just capture people's minds and imaginations with things which stick. So I want you to all think about your first memory, your earliest memory, just now. Take a second to think about your first memory. We haven't got time to have a nice big workshop discussion about what that is and share it, but I just want you to think about it and I'll come back to that later on. So anyway, it's been a great year um, uh, for tourism in Scotland. That's what we're told. We're told it repeatedly at, um, at gatherings across the country. We, 2014 was a sort of annus mirabilis for, for, for tourism. We had you know, everything from the Ryder Cup to 
um, the Commonwealth Games, to the Scottish referendum, when you know the, the whole world, even if it wasn't interested in, in tourism, was interested in the future of Scotland and, and what the Scots would do about that and, and, and all things Scottish. And, 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 and coming away from all of those events, we've seen some fairly fundamental changes um, beginning, to, beginning, to, beginning to take, take, take place. Um, and in Ayrshire and Arran, um, we, we did our bit to this great year for Scottish tourism. Um, we launched the Ayrshire Golf Scotland uh, uh, this year, which has been really, really successful, getting buy-in from some key operators. We could have more uh, buying in, but key operators to promote um, tourism and golf within Scotland. And, and we also attended various events like the Women's Open uh, down in Burke, uh, Birkdale. We're looking forward to the Women's Open coming here to Turnbury. In, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the summer, and we're also looking forward to the Scottish Women's Open coming to Dundonald this summer. So, you know, women golfers will be a big theme. If you're, if you're not geared up to women golfers uh, this year, you, you're really going to miss a great, a great opportunity. We had the air show return uh, to Scotland, the Scottish air show return to Ayrshire after far too long. Um, and it was a really, really successful event. It was a new event for us. It, it made the most of something that we've got uh, unique. It had a lot of energy, a lot of buy-in, and we're looking forward to a, you know, a bigger, better, more exciting air show uh, this, this year. Um, we had the formal launch of our Ayrshire Smiles uh, service excellence program. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit later about quality and excellence, um, actually with a note of caution. But with that note of caution, the confidence that we're doing exceptional work here in Ayrshire and Aaron. In a way, we don't need to be told how good we are, but we are doing it very, very, very well. And that's been a fantastic, um, fantastic initiative. We saw the 30th anniversary of Largs Yacht Haven, one of the real success stories of tourism in, uh, in Scotland. We saw the launch of our volunteer tourism champions and, and a real effort by the Ayrshire and Aaron tourism team to engage with the community and mobilise this, this huge resource and this huge love for our culture, our stories, our, our landscape that exists in, 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 in the community and also to support the whole volunteering programme. Um, along with the establishment of community learning journeys and a great community tourism toolkit. If people haven't seen that, it's, you know, it's a really decent piece of solid collateral that can be used you know, as a very, very quick way of, of establishing great relationships with your local community and getting them, getting them engaged in a sort of collaborative, co-curating, um, cooperative sort of model. It, it, it's interesting, the other day I was, it changes all the time. TripAdvisor um, is very fickle. Uh, and, and, and I'm always looking on TripAdvisor for Ayrshire to see where National Trust for Scotland uh, properties might be sitting, and, and, and I get sort of grumpy if, if we slip down the order. The other day I noticed it was the Clydesdale um, horses in Cumnock were the number one, the number one visitor attraction on that particular day in, in Ayrshire uh, and Arran. And I was quite surprised actually, because I thought, well, we've got, got Calais Castle and the Burns Museum and all these fantastic National Trust of Scotland. And how come, how come, you know, a fairly small, fairly modest operator is doing so? So, well, it's very simple. They had 93 people had given a great review to that, to that place. And if you have 93 people give a great review in any particular time, timetable, it, it has a huge power. And TripAdvisor now is part of a, a social, social media network of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of endorsement and discussion and, and, and discourse that, as you, have you, you've just seen, we can't afford to ignore. But it's very easy to get 93 people to write good things about you, especially if you're engaging with the community, engaging with your customers and so on. It's, it's not uh, rocket science. And we'll come back to rocket science because that is something we want to talk about today. Um, We've also had um, some change within the Tourism Leadership Group. Uh, last year, we, we talked about you know, the change of chairmanship that was coming up, and I'm now uh, the chair, and it's my job to sort of have a look at the, uh, the coming challenges for us and, and, and to, to try and sort of bring in new people to the Tourism Leadership Group to strengthen us and give us, give us the capacity to, to, take, to take a sort of broader, a broader look at some of, some of those challenges. So uh, we've now got um, Sheila Gilmore from Visit Aaron. Uh, involved in the group. We've got Ralph Porciani from the Turnbury Resort is a new, new member of the, uh, of the um, Tourism Leadership Group. And we've also got Danny, Danny Anderson from Zizis uh, Events uh, who are responsible for sort of organising, coordinating the, the air show on. So, you know, we, we are strengthening all the time. We're reflecting changing, changing developments in our markets. The introduction, obviously, of, you know, Trump the Trump Organization coming into Ayrshire is maybe a game changer. Uh, it certainly is an opportunity for us, and it's great to see Ralph involved with the leadership group there. But equally, the, the importance of events and the importance of new product 
um, is, is reflected with, um, with Danny's involvement. And of course, just the example of the way that Aaron, as a collective, collaborative, community-focused organization can get their act together and make their particular, you know, buck uh, punch way above its weight uh, with great results is, a, is, a, is an example to us all. It's great to have visit Aaron there. Um, and then we've had various events as well, um, you know, not just uh, the efforts of our own wonderful Asia and Aaron tourism team led by uh, Rose Halley and her, her great team have been out, you know, really, really sort of um, uh, waving, waving the flag as events from, you know, Visit Scotland Expo to the STA conference, you know, just all over the place. It's been a very, very visible, very visible organisation. And, and in a way, it's slightly embarrassing sometimes because people come up to me at events and say, you know, Asia and Aaron, you've, you've obviously really got your act together. I can see some of the ch challenges that we've got, actually. I'm always very conscious of all the stuff we've got to do. But actually, our public face, our public face in the industry, in the sector, and, and more widely, is a, is a very, very sort of coherent, competent, well-organised team. And a lot of that's down to the Asia and Aaron team and just that sort of Herculean effort they put into, into delivering this. Other things that have happened, um, we had the Commonwealth Fencing uh, Championships. I used to fence, you wouldn't think it, but I did once, used to be able to fit into a pair of white britches and, and do it. So it's, it's actually quite good to see events coming to, to, to Ayrshire like that because I know um, actually, despite the fact it's not on telly very much, there's a lot of people and actually a fairly, you know, a fairly influential uh, group of people who get involved in that. We had hundreds of people come along to the Commonwealth um, Fencing Championships. And then other things, infrastructural things. Uh, the road equivalent tariff being launched at the end of October uh, has potentially transformed the whole market for Aaron. We don't know yet what that's going to do in terms of the, the volume of visitors going to Aaron, but it means you can now take a, a car over on the ferry for something, Linda's here, it's about 15, 16 pounds, something like that, for a, if you haven't taken your car over to Aaron, uh, you know, the, the great opportunity to, 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 to get just huge numbers of people over to Aaron is, is fantastic. It's about seven or eight pounds return as well if you just go as a foot passenger from, you know, it's a fraction of what it used to be. So there's all these wonderful things, uh, and it's part of my job to say to all of you who've helped to make this happen, well done, that's fantastic. It's absolutely great. But I do want to caution against complacency because I've noticed over, um, over, over you know, the last couple of years, really, there's been a growing trend for management consultants or speakers at conferences or industry leaders to, to talk very enthusiastically about the whole principle of marginal gains. Has anybody been at a meeting where anybody's talked about cycling and marginal gains and things like that. Is it familiar to people? Am I the only one? Well, <laughs> believe me, I hear it quite a lot. It's interesting at the last uh, Scottish Tourism uh, Alliance conference that there was a discussion about it. And the theme was, well, you know, we've had a good year. We've done very, very well. We're working on quality. We're working on excellence. We're working on giving good customer service. So what we need to do now is make sure we do all those things a little bit better. And if we all do those things a little bit better, like the British cycling team and their whole theory of excellence in performance through marginal games, if we just all do everything a little bit better, then we as a whole can make quite big strides forward. Now that's true, we do have to do everything a little bit better. We do have to strive for quality, for excellence, for great customer care, great service and great product. But there's a danger there, and we've seen that, I think, in cycling recently. And that those marginal games, as a, as a tactic, work very, very well for British cycling for a few years, because they were doing it and nobody else was. And because they were doing it and nobody else was, we won loads and loads of medals and Chris Hoy became a great you know, hero and um, everything from, from the Tour de France to Olympic medals to World Cycling Championships were just absolutely smashed by British cyclists. It seemed that we were sort of superheroes, gods of cycling. But actually everybody else has caught on to that now and the New Zealand teams and the Australian teams and the Colombian teams and the Kazakhstan teams and all of these people, they're all doing marginal games as well. So everything's shifted. And now everybody's gods, everybody's superheroes, everybody's performance has gone up. It also happens to have coincided with getting rid of performance drugs on the same scale out of cycling. And actually the, the emphasis on scientific performance against chemical performance has shifted things as well. But what's, what's happened is marginal games gave a quick win, but as soon as everybody else gets into it, the, 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 the state levels out again. And, and nothing has particularly changed. You're back to a level playing field again. And I think the danger for us in, in Ayrshire is actually we haven't seen the numbers and the impact and the success of 2014 that Edinburgh and Glasgow saw. 
you know, we didn't benefit, benefit quite as much as those places. And they were, you know, they were exponential game changers for, 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 for some parts of Scotland. But we've still got quite a big job to do. And I think if, if we only think about doing things a little bit better, and we only think about marginal gains, that there's a danger that because the playing field's changed, that, that we, could, we could be creating challenging, challenges for us. So I think what we need to do today is not just think about marginal gains, because actually we're very good at it. Things like Ayrshire Smiles, things like the community tourism engagement, things like just the good quality of, of product that we do on a consistent basis, the five-star attractions, the, 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 the constant awards, you know, the Thistle Awards for Okrani year after year, all of this stuff show we are excellent, actually, at doing stuff well. We don't really need to be told to do stuff well. Um, that's why we do what we do. Um, but what we really need to do is change the game in Ayrshire and Arran. We need to do something special. My first memory, I don't know what yours was, but my first memory was being dragged out of bed at the age of three to watch a crackly black and white television screen and a man walking on the moon. And it was the most exciting thing I think I've ever seen in my life. It was just, it just changed the whole way I thought about the world. You know, any problem I think, you know, the human race faces, we can probably overcome because I remember seeing a man walked on the moon. From social justice to health and well-being to international relations, actually, if we can put a man on the moon, we can probably fix most things. We just need to find the right way. Um, we have an opportunity, potentially, for a game changer in Ayrshire and Arran this year. Uh, we'll be hearing a little bit more about the spaceport and whether or not it might, it might come to Presswick. But the fact that Presswick Airport has been, um, has been shortlisted for, um, for, for one of the, the six locations in the UK that, that might be Britain's first spaceport. Now, th this doesn't mean necessarily that we'll have Virgin, Virgin Galactic turning up and lots of sort of outbound space tourism. Uh, it'd be great if we had inbound space tourism. That would be an interesting one. Um, but it does mean that you know there's a great opportunity for growth in engineering, um, uh, corporate tourism, events, um, all of the whole business of, of putting commercial commercial rockets into space, and all of the engineering, all of the education, all of the spin-off, all of the conferences, social social engagement, every, everything that, that goes with that. It could absolutely transform business in, 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 in Ayrshire, without overstating it. And it could transform the way people look at Ayrshire and Aaron, because we've got a great story to tell, but it's a story which is rooted often in heritage, and it's, it's rooted a little bit in the past. And that's good, and we shouldn't lose that. But we also have an opportunity to tell a story which is about the future. So the one thing I'd like to say is, let, let's look out today for these kind of game-changing things. In, in my mind, I was thinking, you know, what, what would people in in America, in California or Nevada or something like that do if they had the potential of a spaceport coming to coming to the town that they lived in. I'm pretty sure you would have, you know, space-themed discos in hotels. You'd have space-themed, um, uh, you know, shop windows in, 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 in the shops. You'd have pubs doing space-themed events. You'd have silly stories in the news about B&Bs offering a free discount to anybody who's the first extraterrestrial visitor, you know, gets, gets a free cup of tea or anything like this. You know, you go space loopy because it's an opportunity to change things and I'd quite like to see over the next few months um, us going a bit space loopy I would like to see the shops in Airtown Centre having space themed um, shop windows I'd like to see you know hotels and, and pubs putting on daft space discos or or just you know good stories imaginative good silly stories in 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 the press because we don't want this story just to be a, an engineering infrastructural government grey suit story those are the guys who are going to deliver it. You know, the guys in the grey suits with the blue shirts, they will deliver it for us, and we should get behind them. But what will make it exciting is all of you just going a bit mad and crazy and having fun with it. Because if the message that we send out is that Ayrshire is looking forward and thinking about change, then you can just imagine the kind of social media noise, the kind of PR, the interest, the new audiences that are coming in. Because we need that to happen. And we need new thinking. Um, it's not just a spaceport. Think, think about your first memories. Think about the things that stick in your mind and the things that really affect your, your sort of worldview and your life. We have, we have the opportunity to give people memories that absolutely stick in Ayrshire and Aaron and, and not just the goldfish moments. So today, all of you, think of those inspirational moments and have a great day. And thanks once again. Cheers. Nat, thank you very much for that insight. Um, 
great to hear your, your views on the spaceport. Uh, some real exciting opportunities ahead. My big concern, of course, is if we stick an advert in the Kilmarnock Standard asking for space cadets to turn up, that uh, we could have some interesting candidates at the door. Um, Slightly different story, but let's move on. Uh, great again, I mean, I'm a, I didn't say it in my introduction, but I'm a local Ayrshire boy, I'm from Largs, so great to see you know, all of these things happening on our doorstep. And yes, we should be congratulated for what has already happened, and of course, striving for you know, as best we can. Uh, and I love your idea about let's make it fun, let's make it forward thinking, because that's what we already are, and we should just be pushing that a little bit more.